what's the difference between the older and neo enochian materials the simpler question to answer would be what traits do they share in common and that are the same because this answer would certainly be much shorter to be honest the neo enochian materials are so unique a work that to understand them one does not only not need to know the complete Golden Dawn folio of group ceremonial magic rituals, but knowing these might actually confuse a student of exclusively Neo-Enochian work. Mather's complex and convoluted Concourse of the Forces, described as the four dragon diagrams in Regardi's Golden Dawn book, published originally 1937 to 1940, do little to prepare the mind of the reader for the way the Neo-Enochian models actually work. But, to state it simply, the only commonality between the original Enochian models of John D, 1527 to 1609, and the Neo-Enochian models of SLM Mathers, 1854 to 1918, is the basic grid outline of the four elemental watchtowers that being a network of 12 rows by 13 columns for a total of 156 cells per each watchtower. Although Dee's original design for this model yet appears to have been arbitrary, short of admitting it divinely inspired, it provided Mathers the framework onto which to map his model of a matrix of elements within elements. While D had used this framework exclusively to house letters in his contrived Enochian language, Mathers used it to cross-reference the elements in three rows by four columns, and thus to render the twelve signs of the zodiac. It seems to me at this time unlikely D had foreseen or intended this use of his model and its application this way. Nevertheless, Mathers' Neo-Enochian innovations made on D's original system are an exponential expansion to it. The method of dressing the four watchtowers using truncated pyramids and, and an array of wildly differing color coding methods is also a product of the Golden Dawn cipher manuscripts and should be seen to enhance Mather's work with the elements and zodiac signs, but to add nothing more original itself. In short, Mather's Neo-Enochian works, color-coded or not, are valid, but the truncated pyramids model for the cells of the four watchtowers, color-coded or not, would be irrelevant without Mather's Neo-Enochian correspondences to add traits to each cell besides simply the letters attributed by D. So, to sum up, the differences between D's original Enochian magic system and Mather's Neo-Enochian method for dressing D's four watchtowers are numerous. D's Benorum method is abandoned entirely, even in the Golden Dawn ciphers themselves, in favor of the four watchtowers, which are, by Mather's time, the only thing remaining, and then only in skeletal form, of D's original models. The question of, can Mather's Neo-Enochian four watchtowers be worked as a system of magic like that of Dee's original Enochian material, can only be answered correctly if we can determine that Mather's work in arranging the traits onto the model is complete and accurate. Of course, as any student of this system knows, working on deciphering the final and best arrangement for the traits proposed by Mather's is one of the stages in the magical work of this model. Where Mathers left the work incomplete, it follows it can be solved for a single right answer. This solution is the completion of the Neo-Enochian phase of this work and the beginning of the phase that follows it. This third phase I call the Atlantean calendar model. 